Thank you very much. Next speaker, Mr. Kretzis, General Secretary, World Federation of Trade Unions. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Workers, representatives, ladies and gentlemen, first of all, from this global podium, I would like to salute the militant struggles and the outburst of millions of workers all over the world who refuse to foot the bill for the capitalist crisis, a crisis which is increasingly generalized and deeper. World peace is dangerously threatened, not for the human rights, as some would have us believe, but because of imperialistic, geopolitical, and economic interests. That's why, for us, struggle for peace means struggle against imperialist interventions, for the dismantling of NATO and all military coalitions. The high inflation brutally undermining workers' living standards. Social inequalities are widening dramatically. The right to organize and collective bargaining is under attack. The pandemic has been used to launch new attacks on democratic and trade union freedoms. Individual contracts, privatizations, outsourcing, teleworking and service leasing are just some of the forms taken by this harsh neoliberal attack. We have carefully read the Director General's report. Unfortunately, we see once again that as the attack on social and workers' rights intensifies, instead of measures, proclamations, and slogans multiply. For work to be dignified, it must, be, it must be accompanied by rights. It must guarantee the satisfaction of workers' contemporary needs. Slogans are not enough. The same applies to the report of the occupied Arab territories. The five weeks, violation of Palestine's national, political, social, and workers' rights, black labor, colonization. But what is the reaction? What is the intervention? And above all, what are the measures? WFTU denounces the imperialist policy of double standards and selective sanctions and economic wars denounces the blockade of Cuba. For some countries, violations are deliberately uncovered in order to impose Dragonian sanctions. For others, like Israel, international organizations remain silent or limit themselves to reports and findings. I'm coming now to another issue that concerns pluralism and the democratic functioning of the ILO itself. I speak on behalf of over 105 million members from 133 countries on every continent, whose voice is limited and marginalized by the undemocratic way of functioning of the ILO and also because of the policy of arbitrary exclusions that many states uh, apply. Chile, for example, for the second year in a row, there is not enough time to mention all the complaints, but as a rule, the exclusions concern WFTU affiliates. It is not and never will be acceptable for some to monopolize workers' representation without being entitled. More than any other institution, ILO should become pluralistic and representative. Mr. Chairman, I'm concluding my speech 
as the General Secretary of the oldest and most historic World Trade Union Federation with a call to the workers. The system that generates crisis and reproduces exploitation can be defeated. United and organized in our class-oriented unions, let us intensify our struggles for a world free of wars and imperialist interventions, free of exploitation and discrimination, where work will be permanent and stable, regulated and safe. Thank you very much. Thank you very much.